Good afternoon everyone, we're back on the driveway. Today we're going to be fitting a sun visor to a series Land Rover. I've had this painted up for a good few years now and I've never fitted it. It was originally on Bumpy when we had it when we were kids. But um, never fitted it, so let's do it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some masking tape to where I'm going to draw the windscreen. I'm pretty nervous about doing this because I don't want to hit the glass. If I mess it up, I'm going to have loads of holes in my windscreen. Luckily I do have a spare, but the glass is rubbish, so I really want this to work first time. So now I've got that on, I'm going to get my lovely assistant behind the camera to help me hold the sun visor. I'm going to get a sharpie and mark the tape, and that will let me know where to draw my holes. You happy? Our marks. The centre ones. I might do the first, um, do the sides first, and then the centre because it was sitting slightly proud of the windscreen. And um, this is the one you're going to have to be careful of because there's not a lot of material there, and obviously the glass is sitting in, so it's got to be dead centre, not to hit the glass panels. But um, hopefully we don't. This side I'm not too worried about. This section is actually quite deep. It's about 30 mil deep. So we've got a bit of play there, but um, time to get the drill out and have a go. Right, for fixings, I'm going to use M6 um, riv nuts. I don't know if you guys have seen these before. Your threads inside and like a rivet, you drill a hole, put it in with the uh, special riv nut tool and then it pulls back, mushrooms the end and gives you a thread. These are excellent for sheet metal and um, basically thin walled material that you can't um, like tap. I did buy some self tappers, which previously when the sun visor was on bumpy, it had self tappers, but I mean, these suck. I've never found any that actually work. If anyone knows of any like company or something that sells decent ones that don't just strip the thread, please let me know down in the comments because this, well, I haven't tried these ones actually. I just bought them for this project, but I probably know I'm going to waste my time. Plus, if you use a riv nut, you have a better choice of like bolt and fixing, so you can get a uh, a prettier bolt head. So I'm going to use like an Allen bolt head, where these, you know, you either have like well a hex one like that, or you know Phillips, or I guess you probably find flatties and like that and whatnot. So this is the uh, riv nut at all. I mean, I highly recommend buying one of these if you do any sort of fabrication work or just general sort of like even DIY hobby stuff around the house. These are so sweet for uh, sheet metal. You have a mix of sizes, so you can do all types of threads. It doesn't come with, um, you know, fittings. So this was just cheap little eBay sort of multi-pack. Again, really recommend getting these because when you just need like, you know, the odd one, perfect. I did buy some stainless ones for a past project, but you know, with being stainless, it doesn't stretch. So I found they actually suck because they just split. And um, I can't remember if it kept pulling the threads out. They didn't work anyway. So the steel, and I imagine you can get some alley ones. I don't have alley ones, but they'll be just fine for what I need. Obviously rust and longevity, not too sure, but if that's the case, I sure can just drill it out and do another one. So with the rib nuts, um, we're gonna have to work out what size hole we want for that to go in. I want it pretty tight. You don't wanna, you can have a bit of a loose hole because obviously it works like a rivet, but the tighter the hole, the better these work. Um, this is probably gonna be quite hard to do one-handed. Uh, let's have a go.
Right, we're looking at a nine mil hole then. So I'm gonna go through the drill bits, find a nine mil. And um, I'll do a couple of smaller holes, probably start off with a three up to like a five and then do the nine. Another reason I'm choosing the rib nuts over the uh, self tappers is because of the choice of fixings. Basically, whatever's M6 you can have rather than what the uh, self tapper has. So I'm gonna be using these uh, button head Allen fixings. They will look perfect. Plus it's what I have actually on the brackets to the sun visor. So it's all gonna look um, in keeping with what's on there. Sweet. If anyone's interested in this sweet drag tire table, it's gonna be for sale soon. I don't know where or when, but soon. Here we go. I got my bottle crate all set up. Whoop. I'm gonna aim for the center, just so I have up and down adjustment if I need it. I'm um, just gonna start off with the punch and uh, yeah, work our way up. I am soiling myself. I'm not gonna punch the center one because of the glass. I'm just gonna freestyle that drill, but yeah, for the sides, I'm gonna use a punch. Fear has become real. I did not realize that these are actually, it's like a T section. So what I was led to believe was if you fucked up your drills there, you was gonna hit the glass. Well, you can't hit the glass cause that is definitely metal in there cause I hit both sides. That's a six mil I've done there. I think got up to nine luckily. So maybe these, We've got a bit of bite there. So hopefully these will come through and we can use it. Otherwise, I've got some holes on my windscreen. Excellent. I'm just gonna do a quick preview of how to use the Rivnar. So basically you've got your thread there and obviously your thread in there. Screw that on. There is an adjustment gauge, but I never use it because it never seems to work. You just go by feel. So it'll be really easy. And then when it starts getting tight, you want to stop, otherwise you'll strip the thread out. Alright, so squeeze it, light, it's starting to get a bit stiff. And that's it. One thread. I don't know what's going on here. I might have to hit it with the drill again just to wind it out because I couldn't get that in then. But um, there we are, that's it. And that's how you get a thread and sheet mill. So I've gone ahead and removed the middle bracket because it's going to be easier for me to fit this first because it, it was um, it's kind of sitting like that. That sun visor does need a bit of bending. I mean, it's really bent up because it's old anyway, but we'll make it work. Uh, calling back on my old friends I slagged off earlier. Let's see if these work. I'm praying they do, otherwise I've got holes. It's working! <laughs> it's working! <laughs> Right, I'm gonna leave them a bit loose just so we have some adjustment. Oh, thank Yo! Ugh. I think that is crisis averted. I've left it a bit loose, so I've got the play. But I was fully thinking I was in the in the dark then. Sweet. I'm sorry, you're excellent. I love these.
Right, I haven't fit the centre yet. I mean, it's looking pretty sweet. Yo, I like it. I like how beat up it is as well. Like I said, it was one off the old, I say the old car, it was this, but <laughs> years ago. You can see it's not perfect. But then is this perfect? Right, I'm gonna sort the center out now, fix down the center, and then, um, yeah, all done. I'm gonna add some Loctite on these ends, because obviously it's just going straight into the rib nuts, so I wanna have some sort of anti-vibe protection. So I just put a bit of Loctite blue on that, and then uh, good to go. There we have it, the sun visor is fit to the Land Rover. We had a bit of a hairy moment where I drilled the uh, center holes and almost had nothing to put in them. Now, going through town is gonna to be something to get used to. It's really hard to see traffic lights. And uh, if you're going like down and up a hill, it's basically blind <laughs> until you get your nose up the hill. I'm a bit 50-50 on the looks right now. It's more of a nostalgia value I put it on. So if I don't like it, I can always take it back off. But yeah, pleased, pleased. I can't see a thing.